Okay, thank you and welcome to the licensing subcommittee uh, looking at the review of CMYK. Um, the first order of business is for the councillors to nominate a chair of the panel. Please could one councillor nominate and one second. Um, yes, I nominate yeah, I Martin nominate. Welton. And is that seconded please? Uh, yes, it is seconded, yeah. And accepted, Councillor Welton? Yes, that is accepted. And um, good afternoon to everyone attending uh, the licensing subcommittee hearing uh, this afternoon. Um, before we um, go on, I'll advise that this has been live streamed on the Council's YouTube channel. And um, please also be aware that as this meeting has been held virtually, there may be a slight delay. Uh, participants will be muted when they are not speaking to reduce background noise. If anyone experiences technical difficulties, they should let uh, the clerk of the committee, uh, Richard Seedhouse, know. In the event any party to the hearing loses connection and are no longer present at the meeting, uh, we will adjourn immediately for a few minutes whilst we resolve the issue. In the event that the issues cannot be resolved, the meeting then will be rescheduled for another date as soon as is impractical. Uh, before we proceed, um, is there any declarations of interest from councillors or apologies for absence? I'll take that as read. There isn't. Um, just to advise all parties of the subcommittee that we will follow the hearing procedures, a copy of which was included in the notice pack sent to all parties. Um, if anyone has not received the papers, please speak now. Okay, um, we have a legal advisor, uh, Guy Bishop, um, to inform those present that the subcommittee had a briefing prior to the hearing to confirm the procedure and for clarification any aspect um, of the application. Um, is there anything you'd like to add, Guy? No, nothing to add, um, just that you had a pre-meet um, where you read the papers and um, uh, any clarifications will be uh, put into any decision, any advice will be only in decision when it comes to it. Thank you. Um, in terms of the licensing officer, um, Tony Hawkes, um, is there any technical issues you feel that need to be brought to the attention of the panel? Uh, yes, Chair, there's a couple of issues that will perhaps require some input from the, from the police and the license holder as well. First of all, the police have made a request earlier this afternoon to submit some additional information. Uh, the, the information relates to an event that has occurred since the publication of the papers. I understand that the applicant has some comments to make on that. So I would suggest that you uh, that we hear from the police first and then the comments from the applicant, and then you can decide whether or not to accept that information. Uh, the second point is I understand the police will be asking to, to hear part of the application in private due to some ongoing in police investigations into some of the incidents they want to refer to. Um, and again, Chair, I believe that it'd be quite appropriate to hear from the police on that point first before you make any decision on it. Can I turn now to um, the police to advise um, on that matter as the applicant for the review into this? Um, hi, uh, yes, Chair. Um, my name is Flora Curtis and I'm here uh, representing the police and also, as you'll see, PC O'Brien is here too. Um, the, so the police have actually sent in two further pieces of information, one of which was sent on Friday and we, we didn't receive any objection to that being uh, introduced, so we assume that there hasn't been any objection. Um, the second piece of information is a very short document um, which relates to an incident that occurred this weekend, which is why it's only been sent in today. Um, it's, you know, a, a description of an incident. The description is very short, I think uh, one or two sentences. Um, so it's the police's position that it wouldn't cause any prejudice to any parties uh, by introducing that evidence at this stage. You know, it's not like we're uh, dumping a huge amount of further documentation at the last minute. Um, it's a very short uh, record of an incident that we couldn't have submitted any earlier than today. Uh, in in respect of the, um, the closed hearing issue, I'm not sure if you want to, um, to hear about that now or, or... I think we'll hear about that now as well, yes. We'll cover both points. Uh, yes, so uh, essentially um, 
and uh, PC O'Brien can probably provide a bit more information as to which uh, exact incidents are still subject to ongoing investigations and proceedings. But um, obviously, um, as you will have seen from the papers, uh, a lot of the matters uh, at issue in this case are um, uh, allegations of um, criminal incidents that have occurred in and around the premises, some of which are still um, subject to ongo ongoing criminal proceedings. Um, it would be the preference of the police, therefore, for um, essentially the parts of the meeting, which I'm not sure it will really be able to dis distinguish very clearly between you know, incidents that are still subject to ongoing um, investigation and, and incidents that aren't, that aren't, because they all essentially form part of a whole, which is essentially why we had requested um, for the uh, meeting to be held in a closed setting so that no prejudice would be caused to those ongoing uh, investigations. Um, I'm not, I think PC O'Brien can probably uh, add a bit more um, detail to that. Would PC O'Brien like to come in? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, there's currently um, two incidents which are still ongoing uh, criminal matters um, and will be um, held at court shortly. So, yeah, as um, Ms Curtis said, it would be preferable to have a closed hearing. And I will allow Graham Hopkins, who's representing CMYK, to come in on those points. Mr Hopkins. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I can deal with the second one first, we have no objection to the hearing being held in camera. Um, nobody wants to prejudice police inquiries or break the contempt of court rules, so no objection to that. We do object as a matter of principle to the additional evidence. Uh, the hearing regulations, as you all know, Chair, are quite clear that anything produced on the day or submitted on the day has to be with the agreement of all parties. We don't agree. <clears throat> I'll allow legal advisor to come in and advise on that point, Mr. Bishop. So the norm, the norm, the normal procedure is that um, uh, the evidence would be um, submitted um, at least twenty-four hours before the hearing, um, and then um, with the consent of the parties, unless um, the committee decided otherwise. Um, the question here is whether it's going to be prejudicial to the applicant. Um, uh, sorry, to the uh, premises license holder as opposed to the applicant. Um, and that is for you to decide. If you want to have a mini discussion about it, more than happy to do so. I think in view of that point, um, I will have a very short adjournment to discuss it with the subcommittee and we'll come back um, within five minutes. Okay, what I'll do is I'll move uh, any, anybody who's not a party of the subcommittee back into the waiting room uh, and I'll try and do this as quickly as possible. Please bear with me. Um, we're now back on the live stream. Um, thank you for your patience during the adjournment. Uh, over to you, Councillor Welton. Thank you. Um, I reconvene um, this hearing. Um, we have considered the evidence um, that has been presented to us. Although it was late, we believe that it is pertinent to the case and it will be considered um, alongside uh, the other evidence in this hearing. Um, on the other point um, in relation to um, this hearing being a closed hearing, given the evidence, um, we accept that um, as a panel, uh, so the evidence will be heard um, in private. <laughs> 